All right, guys, today we're going to be looking at a problem with an oil leak on this 1.4 liter Ecotec. We're in a 2012 cruise, and you can see all this oil on the drive belt tensioner. And what's happening here is this is indicative of oil being slung up from the crankshaft pulley because of a failure of the crankshaft seal. So that oil is leaking out behind the crankshaft pulley. It's getting onto that balancer and it's getting slung up here. And this is the first thing it hits and kind of blocks it from coming up here on the alternator. We're going to get down in here and get some better access to confirm that. But that's pretty much what I think is the symptom here. All right, so here's the other side where the crankshaft seal and timing chain cover are. We can see we've got oil on our tensioner. We've got oil all underneath this lower crankshaft pulley side. We've got oil stains on the back of that axle shaft. And we've got oil all up around here. So it's looking like it's the crankshaft seal or the timing cover or both. So what we'll do today is we'll go after this crankshaft seal. We'll take a look at that. We're going to have to pull the crankshaft pulley to have a look Turbo. at that. And what we're going to be changing is the front crankshaft seal in order to see that and uh, give you visibility. We're going to have to take this liner out. So we've got some of these push pins in here. Show you the first one here. and You're just going to remove all of them with a tool like this. Or if you got it, a flathead screwdriver, you just want to get the center piece to push out so it's not locked. And then you can get the rest of it out like that. So just go ahead and remove those all around the liner and then we can take the liner out. You're going to have to do on both sides. And then on the front you're going to have three T15 screws that you have to take off. Alright guys, um, there's also a couple of those T15s holding this front lip on and a couple more push pins. But with those out of the way then you can finally work this guy out from around the bumper area and get him pulled out. On this end, you're going to have a seven millimeter screw. That you have. All right, there's one more push pin on the back as you pull this off, and that's it for the liner. Now we've got the liner out. Now we can see there's our crankshaft pulley and our crankshaft pulley bolt. You know, the seal's going to be laying right behind here. So in order to get ready to pull that off, we're going to have to release the tension on the belt with the belt tensioner, and then we'll be able to pull this pulley off and change out the seal. All right guys here's the top of the belt tensioner. You got an E14 bolt head on there. If I can get my E14 tool on there I'll show you the tool in just a minute. Pull it towards the front of the engine. Take the tension off the belt. And then you can remove the belt. Of course. All right so pull up on it. And you can work the belt off the back of the alternator. And then while it's still up, put the grenade pin back in. And then slowly let down on the tensioner. Now if you don't have the original grenade pin, you can use a nail. That just takes pressure off the spring. All right, let me show you this tool we used. All right, guys, here's our E14 socket. You can see zoom it on the end. And then what we use is a tool like this. this is an OEM Tools 24687. It's good for getting all kinds of these belts off because it's adjustable. In this case, we were able to hook it on like this from above and squeeze it down from the top like that. All right, guys, consulting the service manual. This is the cruise version. Um, this is going to be the same repair on any of these engines that have these same RPO codes that you see up at the top, right, for the 1.4 liter. So crankshaft front seal replacement. So what we're having to do before we get to actually pulling it off is we're having to get to the point where we can remove the crankshaft pulley. And what they talk to you about doing here is getting this into a position where it's lined up. So there's a better picture here. Yeah, here it is. There's a alignment hole here, and there's a mark on the engine block there. I'll take you down and show it to you on the engine. We're going to rotate this until those two are lined up. This pulley goes on to an oil pump, and so it's very critical timing-wise that you get it in this exact orientation when you put it back on. So we want to get it like this before we take it off. Once we line this up, it's just a matter of spinning off the bolt, pulling off the pulley, 
and then uh, yanking the seal out with a seal puller and then putting the new seal in and reversing everything. So it's not that big of a, of a deal as long as you pay attention to this. So let me go show you this on the actual crankshaft pulley. All right, guys, so here's the hole in the crankshaft pulley. And then our mark is right up here. Let me zoom in for you to see that. All right. So there's the mark right there, that little line that I just showed next to my finger. Maybe I put my finger right underneath it, right there. So we're going to rotate this pulley until that circle and that line line up, just like you saw in the manual. All right, guys. Let's see if I can get this to turn without blocking your view too much. All right. So that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to get that hole and that mark lined up, and I think I might even have went just like a hair too far. Just try to correct it like that. There we go. All right, so now we've got that lined up. Now we can pull the bolt. Okay, guys, I marked these two in yellow just so it's more clear to you. So that's the alignment you're looking for. All right, guys, the next thing we're going to have to do is take this shield off the bottom. It's held on by several 8 millimeter screws and one more push pin. So go ahead and take that off so that we'll have access to get the tools in that we need to do to get the crankshaft pulley out. All right, so now we're going to position this tool into the pulley slots. And that's going to keep the pulley from moving out of position while we turn that E18 bolt in the center. So I'm going to get our wrench in position, then we're going to break the torque on that and get it off. And yeah, guys, I did uh, pre loosen that so that we didn't waste a lot of time. Now this bolt gets discarded. They're not reusable. All right, so guys, this is the tool I was using. This is not the GM tool. This is actually a Chinese knockoff. But um, it's pretty handy to have in jobs like this. It's got a cutout for a half-inch breaker bar either here or here. We used it in this position. Get a helper to hold it. It keeps the pulley in that relative position with that alignment that we showed while we get it off. And as you saw, we had to use an impact wrench to get this E18 crankshaft bolt off. And like I said, this is not reusable. This is a bolt that's only used one time, torque to yield. We're going to replace it when we put this stuff back together with a GM 912-9242, which is a replacement one of these bolts. And I'll show you in the service manual where they make a point of telling you you can't reuse this. All right, so now with this bolt off, we should be able just to wiggle this pulley off. And again, you know, you want to remember that This yellow mark is going to line up with that yellow mark that we saw earlier. And this is the part that goes into your oil pump. And there's our seal, right? So let me get some of this uh, cleaned up and then we'll go pull the seal off. All right, we're just going to use a standard seal puller to get the old one out. Just want to make sure we are grabbing the actual seal and not damaging the aluminum on the block, that's as easy as it takes to get it off. So there's our old one. Let me go clean this up around here and then we'll install the new one. All right, guys, we've got our seal cavity all cleaned up. It's going to have some varnish color. That's what that amber you see is. What we want is the sur surface area where the seal is going to sit. We want that to be clean. Here's our new seal, an AC Delco 296-26 or a GM 2519 3519. Looks like this. Right? Simple seal. And the old one for comparison is right here. So this gets installed with a seal driver, and I don't have the GM one. I have an OTC one, which is a knockoff of the GM one that's specifically for these engines. And it looks like this, right? This little guy. He basically sits on like that. And I'm not going to be able to drive him all the way in with you guys being here because a camera is going to be in the way 
You basically are gonna take a seal driver like this. I'll see if I can get it started though. And you use a dead blow hammer and you drive it in. So let me go ahead and move the camera out of the way and get this fully seated and we'll show it installed. All right, we've got this fully seated. Now if we zoom in here, you can see what you want is a nice flush nice and flush you want to feel the outside the seal and the engine block surface area flush so now we're ready to reassemble all right guys before we put the pulley in you know we cleaned it off and get some fresh dexos 5w30 i'm just going to run it around the rim of the seal just so it's not running dry then we're going to do the same thing on the surface that, of the pulley that the seal rides on. And again, we cleaned this off with brake clean, but there is going to be its actually some crud in here that I, I guess I want to get out of there before we install it, but there's going to be this kind of varnish on there. That's fine. You just want to get the, the old oil off of there. All right, so I went ahead and I, I missed cleaning some of this in here. And One of the things I noticed on this particular balancer, you can see there's a chunk of the rubber missing on this inside piece and then over here there's a couple of pieces missing don't know what happened there if it uh, took an impact or got a hit during a previous ownership but something we'll keep an eye on is as long as the rubber is intact all the way around the balancer is doing its job but it definitely has some damage we want to keep an eye on all right so we're going to keep our yellow mark and we're going to get it lined up you can see these flats so I'm going to go in one way our belt out of the way I'm trying to do this with the camera in there there we go all right Now we can take our new bolt. And we can get it torqued back down. So let's go take a look at the service manual and see what this torque value is. We use the same tool we use to get it off and we'll take a look at some of these tools. All right guys, taking a quick look at the manual. So crankshaft balancer replacement gives us the first part of our instructions. We'll need an angular torque wrench, an extension, and a shock mount retainer for the crankshaft. These are the three tools that they talk about using. Um, this kind of square shape tool is the shock mount retainer. This is the extension. So what they tell you is uh, after you get the car jacked up, remove the wheelhouse liner, which we already did. Remove the drive belt and fix the drive belt tensioner. That's the little grenade pin that we put in there. Line up the hole and the mark on the engine block, which I showed you. They make a note here to let you know that this can be installed 180 degrees out of sync. That's why you got to make sure you have it lined up like that. Um, you use this to hold it in that relative position. It's going to move a little bit when, when you try to take the bolt off, but you're trying to keep it in that 180 degree position, a little arc of where the yellow mark was that we showed earlier. After you take the bolt out, they make a point of telling you to discard the bolt because it's a torque to yield bolt. You can only use it one time and pull the balancer off. Now, in reversing the installation, we're going to talk about um, pulling the crankshaft seal first, I guess. So you pull the crankshaft seal off. You use a EN45000 remover, but any crankshaft seal puller will do. I showed you a Craftsman one. Anything that has this kind of shape works fine for this type of seal. Put the seal on the seal installer. They use an EN960. I'm going to use an OTC tool instead. And then drive it in using a dead blow hammer or a rubber mallet until it's flush with the front engine cover. Then you can put the crankshaft pulley back on. They make a point of letting you know how these hex heads fit as it goes back in. 
They make sure to tell you that the balancer flange must fit to the hexagon of the rotor and to the two flats of the crankshaft. The top dead center markings on the crankshaft balancer and the engine front cover must match, right? They're talking about these two that we talked about here. And again, it could have moved a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right as you were working to get it off. You can think of it like a pie slice. Everything needs to be in a pie slice of that mark. Um, push it into position with your hand. Measure the distance between the crankshaft balancer and the mark on the engine front cover, and the distance should be 5.5 millimeters. Right? So after you get the bolt pushed all the way in, we're going to check that we have that amount of clearance. I'll show you that. Install a new crankshaft balancer bolt. Tighten it to 110 foot-pounds or 150 newton meters. And then after you do that torque, then take the angular wrench and torque it an additional 60 degrees. This is the torque to yield part of all this. At that point, we can um, reinstall the drive belt and remove the grenade pin, and we'll be ready to reinstall the wheelhouse liner and fire it up to make sure it's not leaking. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. Guys, if you zoom in here, you can see I've got a little digital caliper in here, and I'm measuring the space, making sure that the space between that point on the block and the pulley is about 5.5 millimeters, just like the service manual indicated. All right, guys, 115, 111 foot-pounds. All right. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put an angle gauge on there, and we're going to run it an additional 60 degrees. All right, 60 more degrees, guys. About 30, you have to keep. Let's see where we're at now. Almost. There we go. Maybe just a hair more. I'll do it a hair more, but that's the idea, 60 degrees. All right, guys, we got the grenade pin back out, and we got the belt back on the alternator, and so we're all ready to put our wheel liner back on. All right, guys, we've got the wheel liner back in. I've obviously got the wheel back in, and we got her off the jack stand. Um, the torques and the hex head screws for both the wheel liner and the shield that we took off underneath have a torque of 23 inch-pounds. But my recommendation is, since this is going into plastic, just do snug. Because when the things start to get old, doing the torque values can actually strip them out. So let's take a look under the hood now. All right, guys, we've checked for leaks, and we're looking good. Just want to make sure that the belt is turning okay to make sure that the pulley is fully engaged on the crankshaft. That was part of that 5.5 millimeter measurement that they had us do. But it's just a good idea to check it here as well. Everything looks great. So at this point, we'll give it a couple of test drives and we'll see if this was the leak or just a leak. Anyway, I hope this helped you out and you found it interesting or useful and it saved you some money. If it did, pay it forward and hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.